Welcome back to Autism at Home, brought to you by us at Early Autism Project Malaysia through our non-profit initiative, The Hope Project. My name is Josebet Isaacs, and as usual, it's so nice to see you again. In the previous lessons, we have talked about a range of topics on imitation, from the importance of imitation to the progression of imitation. This has included naturalized imitation, object cued imitation, as well as gross motor imitation. In this lesson, we will be covering all about fine motor imitation, or in other words, the imitation using the little muscles in our fingers. Now let's watch a few examples of these, shall we? Notice how the child was able to appropriately pick up his food off the table using his pointer and his thumb and then put it into his mouth and how he was able to collect the 10 cents coin off the floor and put it into his piggy bank. Fine motor skills are so important in overall independence. From buttoning to holding a toothbrush or a pencil, it's a really important skill and one that many children on the spectrum struggle with. While we go through this entire lesson on fine motor imitation, keep in mind of your child's current fine motor abilities and see how this lesson can provide the knowledge to help them develop their skills better. Now, before we start teaching, let's look at some of the prerequisite skills first. Referring to the building blocks of learning, most important skills to have include engagement and motivation which precede cooperation at and away from the table. Next comes attention and some imitation, which includes naturalized imitation and gross motor imitation. Also, for this particular program, it would be very important for a child to have done a fine motor program, which is just all these object-based easy activities to strengthen fine motor coordination. Now let's go through the method of teaching fine motor imitation. As for the materials needed to teach fine motor skills, these will vary from one child to another and from one action to another. For the purpose of this lesson, we will be using the thumbs up action as an example. The same teaching method following the ABA principles applies for all the other actions in the future. First, show a video model of a person imitating another person doing the thumbs up sign. Then say, do this while showing your thumb up at your child's eye level. When your child is successful in imitating this action, praise them or give them a quick interactive reinforcement like tickles or spaghetti arms and repeat that a couple more times to get sufficient practice. And of course, always, always, always use strong motivation and reinforcement for a job well done. Let's watch this practice after the step of showing the video model. Do this. Well done! Good job! Here you go! Vegetables, tomatoes, eggplant. Some of the actions suggested may be genuinely challenging for your child to perform but may not necessarily be due to their inability to imitate. When a child struggles to perform certain actions that involves the tiny muscles in their fingers, it is very possible that there is a genuine fine motor challenge. So in this instance, when teaching your child an action, if you notice that they are attending to you, they are somehow attempting to imitate, this would mean that they do have the skill of imitation. But what may be the concern is that their fine motor abilities may not be fully developed just yet. In this case, focus on developing these skills separately before using them to target imitation. By doing so, we'll be able to ensure that the ABA principle of breaking skills down is followed. And this will help improve your child's overall success. Some of the fine motor skills we commonly teach our children at EAP that involve materials include unwrapping a gift or a sweet that's wrapped with aluminum foil, lacing cards, peeling stickers, separating Velcro, pulling coins out of Play-Doh. 
When your child has shown consistent success in one action after another, then you may be able to introduce a new skill to teach. Following the general guidelines we've mentioned in the previous lesson, perhaps when you've observed nine successes out of 10 trials, then you may introduce the next skill. The other ideas of actions that can be taught to our children may not necessarily include any materials. Examples of these actions are pointing, as this is a form of communication, prayer hands, which depends on the child's religion, touching nose, so that the child may be able to follow some simple action songs, thumbs up that can be used in their interaction with their peers, and even simpler ones like rubbing palms together. It is also important to practice learned skills in different settings, which again typically includes different locations, different people, and possibly even with different materials if needed. This is to ensure that your child is able to generalize their skills and maintain them. Pop quiz. Which of these is an example of an activity or action that involves the fine motor skills? Running, sleeping, hanging clothes using clothes pins, or crawling? If you said C, then you're spot on. We use our pointer and our thumb to press on each side of the clothes pin before securing them back with the clothes when we dry them. Sammy tries to teach Kumar a new fine motor action, pulling a five cent coin out of Play-Doh. He notices that Kumar is unable to grip the coin firmly. After trying multiple times, Kumar gets upset and throws the Play-Doh jar away. What can Sammy do to make Kumar successful in performing this action? Using a bigger coin, remove the Play-Doh from the jar, both A and B, or none of the above. Both A and B methods would contribute to boost Kumar's ability to successfully pull the coin out of the Play-Doh. The main point would be to break the skill down by simplifying it so that Kumar is more successful. Now it's your turn. Identify two new fine motor skills that you would like your child to learn. Try to teach these actions to your child following the ABA principles of breaking skills down, providing reinforcement, and with sufficient practice. Thank you so much for watching our lesson on fine motor imitation. In the next lesson, we will be talking about block imitation. If you haven't already, do check out our free online resource platform, Autism at Home, which has all the corresponding articles and downloadables for you. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Instagram and Facebook to stay updated. Thank you so much for watching and we We'll see you soon.